Welcome, my name is Sarah Nelson and I'm the Iowa 4-H State STEM Specialist. Hi, I'm Brenda Welch. I'm a Youth Program Specialist for Iowa State University Extension Outreach and I work with counties in Northwest Iowa. And today we're excited to share with you a new tool for distance learning that we hope you really uh, enjoy. And so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see our STEM virtual learning cue cards. So these are our 4-H virtual learning cards. Here is the cover. If I scroll down a little, here's just a little bit on where they are from and how to use them. And then I'm gonna to get to the first three which cover the experiential learning model and Brenda's gonna take us through that. Yeah, so these first, it'll actually be six slides that we're going to show or six pictures are the experiential learning model cards. These cards are found in their own separate document on the extension store, and they are also found in the STEM cue cards. So you'll see them in two places. So the first experiential learning model cue card has a hand with do. And this is a side that if we're doing it virtually, we might show this to the youth so Sarah's holding up the do. So the youth would see that side, the hand. And on the back side of it is what you would read as the facilitator. So this is a very brief explanation of what the do part of the 4-H experiential learning model is. That you're really asking the open-ended questions. They're doing it as independently as possible. And it's very hands-on. Once we're done with the do section, then we come to the reflect section. So then you would hold up the question mark card so they could see the question mark. On the back are your notes, your teacher hints, if you will. And those are where you're going to start asking them to share, to describe what they saw, what the reactions were. Were there themes? What were the problems? What skills did they use? Once you've reflected on the activity, we move to the apply part. So the youth would see the apply part with the gears, and then you see the part where we're, this is really asking youth to generalize and to think about how this applies to real life. In 4-H, we're teaching real life skills. So how do those work in real life in a real day-to-day -day world? So you would ask them, what did you learn about yourself? What did you learn? Even thinking now, what did you learn about working with others as a team? So those are the experiential learning model cards. Those six are available in the extension store as just a separate pack. So Sarah, do you wanna move on and talk about the additional STEM cards? Yes, um, thank you. So Brenda and I then sat down and use the next generation science standards to make these STEM virtual learning cue cards. And we would like you to use them in addition to the ones um, that were shown earlier, the experiential learning model ones. So the first one is ask questions. We would love for you in any STEM learning event to have the youth ask questions and have it be very um, student or youth centered, we'll say. So here's that side and then here is your side. Um, just some tips on how to get people asking questions. And one small tip I'm sure Brenda will agree with uh, is that sometimes starting with something that will generate questions like a little science demo or going out and doing some observations in your neighborhood or those types of things, an activity can often get those questions started uh, and then you can move from there. Yep. So this one would probably be in the do section. Something that you're adding in just a little of a reflecting, but it's more of a doing. What do you do? Then we have create a model, another good um, STEM and engineering process skill. Uh, and here these models can be kind of flat or two dimensional where you're drawing or that type of thing. Or they can also be um, three dimensional. So if I look here, here's some examples of models that can be um, done. Drawings, diagrams, making something physically, dioramas, those types of things. These are all great ways to do models. The next is create a plan. 
So if you have questions, now we need to make a plan to answer those questions. And so this is the one that you might hold up to the youth you are working with after they have asked some questions and they've maybe narrowed it down to one that they're gonna investigate. And so here is your side. So again, it says with educator support, plan and conduct an investigation. A really key thing, and Brenda, don't you like that last bullet point there? <laughs> yeah, to follow the directions. Yes, exactly. And I like how we're talking Clover Kids is going to be more educator support, whereas the older 4-Hers, you're just there as the guide on the side. All right, so one key thing that I think can really boost your STEM learning is to collect and analyze data. So what do we need to know and then how can we record that data are two good questions there. And I love how on this side, on the educator side, it says what data might include, such as observations, photos, numbers, measurements, videos, drawings, or interviews. Data can come in many forms, and so you'll need to collect that and you'll need to have a system for collecting it. Otherwise it can get a little all over the place, right Brenda? <laughs> well, yes, yes. And, I, and I like that we're talking, it's not just a graph and a chart. Mm -mm. A lot of times we think we need trial A, what did it do, trial B, but sometimes it's just taking notes. What did you see, what did you observe? So really your question and your investigation is going to lead as to what type of data you need to collect. Yeah. Great points. All right, so another great um, science and engineering process skill is of course to use math and technology. So do the math and think like a computer. Those two came from Brenda and I. <laughs> so if I scroll down a little bit farther, you can see again, using simple graphs or charts, um, using data to compare two alternative solutions to a problem, just some different ideas there um, for you. Uh, and remember, you can collect data and the students can represent it or the youth can represent it in lots of different ways. And that's a good conversation right there too. How did you organize your data? Now, of course, we can't just do things. We need to reflect and apply. And I can see Brenda shaking her head yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we need youth to explain their ideas. What did you learn or what did you design? So if I scroll down here a little bit, again, making a claim based on evidence. So saying something as simple as, I think this because of this, because of some evidence or data that you have collected. Um, and so again, that claim is really sometimes just as simple as, I think this because. Oh, and here comes our favorite one, right? Yes. <laughs> so agree or disagree, let's compare claims, really is tied to science argumentation. Now, sometimes people get a little scared when they hear that word argumentation, but don't worry. Really what it all comes down to is looking at whether or not you agree with someone's idea or claim, uh, and then sharing your thoughts on it in, of course, a constructive and polite way you know, way in there, you can model that ahead of time if needed, how to do argumentation, how to agree or disagree. And that is, of course, a great skill for anyone um, to have as you move, move through life. Yep, and you'll notice this is where all that data you collected is going to come into play of how did this data point towards this claim that I have, so. Excellent. Sharing your thoughts. So again, communicating your thoughts and ideas at the end. Uh, and so Brenda and I added in speak, write, and draw. We thought those might be three great options there um, for you when you go to ask youth to share their thoughts. And so if I scroll down, again, lots of different ways to communicate through writing, drawing, numbers, posters, plays, you know, you kind of name it, art, lots of different ways to communicate your findings. And we just encourage you to be as creative um, as you want there. And one thing this allows is this allows the youth who don't like to talk to maybe they're going to show the picture. So you're using all the learning styles within this one area. They're still sharing, but they're sharing in the way that works best for them. Good points. 
I'm going to stop share so that then we can talk a little bit about what these might actually look like in one of our 4-H programs like Invent STEM. Now, the other thing we wanted to just showcase to you is that sometimes an extra camera during um, virtual learning can be really helpful because one, the youth can still see my face uh, while I'm talking. And yes, you can hold up the cue cards this way, but you could also then use the cue cards, you know, right there and even just lay them down and have them be a visual reminder. You could pin that image in your Zoom you know, if you want, but it also gives you a chance during that do section to actually model and show some of the things that you're doing. And so again, as you work through all those different cards, like asking questions or showing data, an extra camera can give you, the educator, a way to make those cue cards even more effective because you're not having to kind of go back and forth between showing all these things. You'll have everything kind of set and ready to go. Now, let me also real quickly share then a few more tips um, in a program that you could use these cue cards with. And so let me just make sure I have it all up and ready to go. So if I share this screen with you, what we want to point out is um, like for Invent STEM, we have written some Invent STEM kind of tips for moving it virtually. Uh, and please, of course, add in your ideas too and what you have learned as a professional. But these are just some tips to get you started. Now, last time I did this, the Word document didn't show up. So this time I have um, gone out and will <laughs> pull this up so that it will show this time real well. But I want to just show you the document real quickly uh, and then we can kind of go from there. And if you do need more help on how to guide virtual, dis virtual or distance learning, Sarah, Ani Das and I put together uh, about an hour and 15 minute webinar on distance learning. So make sure that you check that out too. Here is that document that's on the, on the Invent STEM website. And so as I go through this and I start thinking about my cards, one of the things that Brenda and I wanted to share with you is that, yes, the cards can be virtual cues, but they can also help you plan. And so you can use these cards to you can almost lay them out and look at them and say, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then you'll be able to visually see some areas that you could maybe add in, add to your practice, or it could maybe be just when you get done, you can look and see, okay, I use these cards, but I didn't use these cards. So again, these cards can be almost a professional development tool at the same time for you. Mm -hmm. So here's going virtual. So as I go through this and Brenda jump in as you see things too. Yep. Yep. Cue, cue cards can be used for family and youth. And so, yeah, they are for youth, but if you're doing a family event, you definitely could use them too. Um, so again, as I scroll down here, so let's say we have these four sessions here. Think like an engineer, design a better pinwheel, create a wind turbine, uh, and then one of the invent STEM challenges. As I think about all of those, automatically I think about the do, what are people gonna be doing? But then I can think about, okay, what about my reflect and apply cards? Am I going to be using those? The other thing that I can think about is which of those STEM cards can I use in those four different things? I may not use all of them and that's okay, but maybe I can use at least one or two with each of the activities. Uh, and then again, here's some additional um, education activities because again, part of virtual learning is also having hopefully some fun and making connections uh, and really kind of building on positive youth development. And like Sarah said, the, I believe it's eight cards for this um, next generation science standards, the practices, they're not something you're going to do in a half an hour. Mm -hmm. So you need to think through which ones am I doing today, but my next session, I'm gonna be adding on and incorporating more and more. So mm -hmm. don't feel bad if you're only accomplishing one of them today, because tomorrow you may add and you don't have to do that beginning one because you've already done it. So one of the things that we did not show you was how the camera itself was set up. Yes, I was going to just remind you to do that. <laughs> and so let me share this amazing machine that was created. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's called a makerspace concept, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. 
Since we were talking about Invent STEM, I thought we would show you how we made basically kind of a document camera with the Invent STEM wind turbine materials and then my phone at the top there. So that second camera that you're seeing, the window that says Nelson camera, that phone is sitting on top of this. And so the bottom black square and then the top black square is from the wind turbine. And then the wooden dowels are also from that. And what I love is you can move those dolls kind of all over the place. So no matter what size your phone is, you can definitely get um, it to work for you. So we thought we would showcase a little STEM ingenuity for you here <laughs> uh, today too, so that you could see what that camera looks like. Now I've seen people build these out of Legos, cardboard boxes, you know, to be creative. Maybe that's our invent STEM challenge right there, huh, Brenda? Yes, I think it is. How can we as extension staff create our own camera holder. <laughs> and what I like by having that picture of the do there, that's going to help the youth who need that extra support, who need to know where they are in the process. That's going to serve as a reminder to, that, to them that this is where I am. We talk a lot in Clover Kids about giving the hints, the guidance as to this is the part of the process we're in. Yep. So that's really gonna help those youth know Oh, we're in the do process. This is when I do stuff. In the reflect process, that's the questioning process. So that's what I like about showing the cards. Yes. It's gonna help all of us keep on track. Yeah, myself included. Yes. Yeah, and I think one time we mentioned too, Brenda, during that reflect and apply using some different strategies like polling, using the chat feature, yes. holding up yes, no cards. You know, you kind of name it, but getting everybody as involved and as much a part of the group as possible. Yes, and I think when you use polling, when you use maybe just holding up the cards, I'm gonna hold up my event STEM, is that allows those youth who are maybe quieter, they don't feel like they can talk in this large group, they can contribute and you know they're, that they're learning mm -hmm. because they're still answering the questions. They're just not talking. So we hope you have enjoyed our little STEM chat here with Brenda and I, uh, and that we gave you, of course, just a very quick overview of these STEM virtual learning cue cards and the experiential learning cue cards. So you may have additional questions. Please know that both of us are available um, to chat with you or you know, email whatever works for you to help you use these successfully and in a way that we hope helps you really move your STEM practice forward and makes the best STEM virtual learning experience possible. So thank you so much. And we Thanks can't wait everybody. to hear how you use our cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we should get some photos, right? Send Brenda and I a photo. That would be great. All right, thank you everybody.